Hey YouTube, how's it going? Um, I wanted to make a video of all of the targets that I've imaged uh, so far this year. Uh, it's summertime right now in Arizona, so I'm not doing a lot of, uh, of imaging. It's way too hot. So I just wanted to go over the targets that I imaged, where I did the imaging from, and the equipment that I used, uh, telescopes and cameras. Um, I also wanted to say uh, that if you like this video, obviously, hit that uh, thumbs up and uh, like it. And if you feel inclined to, go ahead and subscribe. I'll be creating more videos, so yeah, go ahead and subscribe if you want to and um, see what other content I come up with. But at anyways, um, I appreciate, uh, appreciate the um, comments. And without further ado, let's get to it. All right guys, so let's go ahead and go over where I do my imaging from. There's two locations I do my imaging from. Um, I will do my imaging from Beta Scorpii, which is my home observatory, or I will go out to my remote site, which is Alpha Scorpii. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. Uh, this is a clear sky, clear dark sky chart of Arizona, and if we look at this and zoom in a little bit, uh, Yuma is right here, so this is where I live. Uh, this here is Beta Scorpii, so I live on the outskirts of Yuma, um, and then right over here is Alpha Scorpii. It's about an hour away from Yuma, um, so if we zoom in on that a little bit this light pollution map is a little out of date so let's look at and zoom in on a more updated light pollution map <clears throat> so this is a light pollution map it looks a little more accurate um, and Alpha Scorpia is right around here so if we look at that location there it is a border class 2 I mean it, it's pretty dark out there so so I'd consider it on the closer side to one than two but um, I don't know um, my home observatory beta, uh, beta Scorpii is right around here so if we look at that that is a border class six so yeah uh, those are the two places that I image from all right so let's go ahead and look up my setups um, so primarily I have three setups so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at them. So this is my oldest setup. It is a 8 inch reflector, uh, Newtonian. It is a, it's a thousand millimeter focal length at f 4.9. Um, this was my first uh, scope that I uh, purchased back in 2010 maybe. Um, it's running a 80 millimeter short tube uh, as its guide scope um, and this was primarily what I used uh, from 2012 to 2016 so just to give a little bit of background um, I purchased my first uh, uh, dedicated astronomy camera back in 2012 um, I imaged for that in, until about 2016 and then I stopped don't really know why I think it had to do with uh, work um, I just wasn't able to get out and, and uh, image as much as I had liked so I kind of stopped um, picked it back up again in 2021 and that's where I am now so so yeah so this is my first uh, first scope nice long focal length um, pretty uh, narrow field of view uh, next scope I purchased this scope um, secondhand um, in Phoenix at a really good price. It is a Stellar View 80 millimeter uh, triplet. Uh, focal length is 480 millimeters f6. Uh, if you if you are looking at the picture here and you notice there is no finder scope bracket, so I actually have to. Uh, I had to purchase a side-by-side -side saddle or side-by-side -side, um, Vixen bar so that I could run my guide scope 
on the side. It's not ideal. This thing is hard to balance. I am currently trying to find a solution, some rings or something, so that I can mount a guide scope on top of the 80 millimeter, so that I can uh, achieve balance a lot, uh, a lot easier. So this scope provides some really nice wide wide views, wide field of views. Um, so yeah, so there's that one. My most recent acquisition is the Red Cat. So the Red Cat is a f4.9, 250 millimeter uh, focal length with a 51 millimeter uh, objective lens. So this one by far, um, and I've just had it just a little while, uh, is the one that I've been having the most fun with lately. Um, such a wide view um, that you can just get, you know, all of the North American Nebula, including the Pelican uh, region as well. Um, this is what I shot uh, row with, uh, which you'll see later on um, in the video. Um, but yeah, this this scope is uh, is top notch. So. So those are the scopes that I have. Cameras. So like I said, um, my first dedicated AstroCam was purchased back in 2012. It was the Orion Starshoot Pro V2 Deep Space Color. It's a CCD imaging camera, not a CMOS. Um, pixel size is 7.8 micron pixels. Um, and it is a 16-bit camera. Um, it does have thermoelectric cooling, but it does not have regulated cooling like the newer cameras uh, of today. So, I mean, it, it works, and I did use this this season, so I do have some images um, using that camera. Um, but yeah, it's it's still ticking and it still produces good images at least I feel it does the Altair uh, Hypercam 294C this was a loaner from Iceman Astro thank you Isaac um, he graciously let me use this so that I could familiarize myself with um, the new camera technology and new software such as APT um, so I use this camera more or less as trial and error so that I could get myself up to speed um, prior to purchasing my own uh, camera. So you know I have some images that I that I did take with that too and you'll see those later on in the video as well. Um, but yeah this is a great little camera and, and I really do like the four-thirds uh, chip because it does bring that um, that uh, view in just a little bit and there are some things that you want to bring in just that that little bit to kind of frame them up a little closer so so that's the Altair so I went on ahead and purchased um, an Orion Starshoot G26 color camera um, this camera has the Sony IMX 571 uh, sensor in it it is an APS-C uh, sensor uh, 3.76 micron uh, uh, pixels and it is 16-bit I kind of like the 16-bit cameras because you get that big big uh, dynamic range um, and it does have thermal electric cooling it's basically like a 2600 MC Pro or the Altair 26C um, so yeah it um, and and so I did take a lot of uh, images with this one as well so as you see um, when you're going through the images I'm gonna just I'll show I'll um, as you see with the images I will um, list uh, the uh, the target exposure times uh, where I took it what scope I used and which camera I used so let's get out of all this technical stuff and let's get to the the good stuff let's get to the images